Hi, I'm Joe Alton, MD, that old Dr. Bones of www.doomandbloom.net, where you'll find over 650 posts, videos, podcasts on medical preparedness for any disaster. Together with my wife, Amy Alden, a nurse practitioner, we're the authors of the three-category Amazon bestseller, The Survival Medicine Handbook, the New York Times bestseller, The Ebola Survival Handbook, and the designers of an entire line of medical kits for an austere environment, and even a board game, Doom and Bloom Survival, a great way to get the whole family together, thinking about preparedness and having a little fun while you're at it. There are many antibiotics, but what antibiotics accessible to the average person are good additions to your medical storage, and when do you use a particular antibiotic? In this series of videos on different antibiotics, we're going to discuss the ones that I believe are going to be useful for your medical woodshed, and we're going to talk about them one by one. Before I start, I just want to say that this information is for entertainment purposes only. It does not take the place of seeking medical care from certified medical professionals. The practice of medicine without a license is illegal. It's punishable by law. So if modern medicine exists, please, please, please seek it out. Let's discuss how to approach the use of antibiotics by using an example, the popular amoxicillin. Now amoxicillin has a veterinary equivalent called Fishmox or Fishmox Forte or even Aquamox. The medicine comes in 250 and 500 milligram dosages, usually taken three times a day. Amoxicillin is the most popular antibiotic prescribed to children, usually in liquid elixir form. It's more versatile, better absorbed, and tolerated than older penicillins, and it's acceptable for use during pregnancy. Ampicillin, fishcillin, and cephalexin, fishflex, are related drugs. Amoxicillin may be used for the following diseases. Anthrax, prevention or treatment of the skin version. Urinary tract infections like bladder or kidney infections. Peptic ulcer infections by Helicobacter pylori. Chlamydia infections. Lyme disease transmitted by ticks. Middle ear infections, also known as otitis media. Pneumonia, lung infections, sinusitis. Skin or soft tissue infections like boils or cellulitis and bronchitis and pharyngitis, things like strep throat, tonsillitis too, and a number of others. You can see that hemoxicillin is a pretty darn versatile drug. It's even safe to use during pregnancy, but all of the above is a lot of information. How do you determine what dose and frequency would be appropriate for which individual? Well, let's take an example. Otitis media, common ear infection seen in children, amoxicillin is often the drug of choice for this condition. That is, it is recommended to be used first when you make the diagnosis. A physician's drug of choice for a particular ailment can change over time based on new scientific evidence. Before administering this medication, however, you want to determine that your patient is not allergic to amoxicillin or any of the penicillin family of drugs. The most common form of allergy would appear as a rash, but diarrhea, itchiness, even respiratory difficulty could also manifest. If you see any of these symptoms, discontinue your treatment, look for other options in a different drug family. We'll be talking about that in future videos. Once you've identified amoxicillin as your treatment of choice to treat your patient's ear infection in this case, you'll want to determine the dosage. As otitis media often occurs in children, you might have to break a tablet in half or open the capsule to separate out a portion that would be appropriate. Different dosages apply to different ages and care must be taken in survival settings to give appropriate amounts. If your child's too small to swallow a pill whole, you can make a mixture with water called a suspension or an elixir. To make a liquid suspension, crush a tablet or empty all or part of a capsule into a small glass of water and drink it. Then fill the glass again and drink that in order to ingest any particles that might have adhered to the walls of the glass. You might add some flavoring too, make it taste a little bit better. Commonly, maximum dosages for adults would be 500 milligrams three times a day for 10 to 14 days. As we mentioned in previous videos, all of this information can be found in the very valuable physician's desk reference. Pediatric dosages are covered in detail there and in the Survival Medicine Handbook. A special warning, do not chew or make a liquid out of time-released capsules of any medication. You'll wind up losing some of the gradual release effect and maybe get too much in your system at once. These medications should be plainly marked, time released. This is Joe Alton, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health and good times or bad. Thanks for watching.